What what does that what's that mean? Oh. Dude, he's gonna go back to his friend and talk about <laughs> permits. <laughs> There's no way I'm going to be able to make this a short video, so by all means, you know, if you watch the whole thing, I appreciate it. Thank you very kindly. Uh, um, hmm. Okay, Alice PvP, take one. Crap, there's... <sighs> okay. I'm Boring Brute, and today we're going to be talking about um, a little bit of the mechanics of Atlas PvP. Atlas is a uh, kind of sandbox um, rival game. There's pirate ships, dragons, cyclops, rock homes, all kinds of things. Uh, we're not going to cover all that. Today we're just going to be talking uh, about some simple PvP things that maybe you should know. Um, that list we're going to kind of go over is uh, foods, booze, armor, levels, your ability feats, uh, how to organize your radial menu, and some of the dodging mechanics. Then we're going to go through each of the weapons and we're going to kind of um, highlight the different moves with them. And uh, yeah, kind of give you a general idea of the combat that's going on in Atlas as of current, which is now... Uh, December of 2023. We're on season 13 on the official servers. Um, yeah, it's kind of, it's it is what it is. Like I said, we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about that right now. Um, we're just gonna be talking about the mechanics of the weapons and some of the things that you can do to maybe better your odds uh, in a combat situation. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's get right into it. Okay, so. One thing that we're going to go over is the foods. Now, in any PvP game, um, typically you're going to have, you know, some kind of thing to either increase your damage or reduce the damage taken, make it, yeah, okay, so that's, that's kind of what's going on with the food. Um, in Atlas, there's something kind of crazy too going on. If you look on the right hand side of my screen there's four bars those are your vitamin bars okay and uh so that's your equilibrium basically if you balance your vitamins um and get yourself into equilibrium you can see in equilibrium and it's kind of uh the remainder of the bars are light green there okay so if you do that you're going to be putting out a little bit more damage and i can't remember i think you take a little bit less damage i know you take less fortitude or something like that or whatever the hell but yeah any usual so your pve game has to be pretty strong okay if you want to be doing some pretty serious pvp um that includes too like having uh readied up boxes with your plate gear uh so we're playing in a little bit of a larger group uh so we have like two boxes for each plate set piece Right, so each large storage box has a hundred slots, so you can kind of gather the idea. So with us uh, and most of the other large companies in their main bases, they're gonna have a full loadout room, kind of right close to the crafting room, or they'll have an extra crafting room just for repairing armor. Um, that's gonna be a pretty important thing. So in a large scale war effort, it's just like when you're going to raid or yada yada. You're gonna have kits that you've prepared for this occasion you know you're not just running out there uh naked with a pike and expecting to take down a guy that's like level 110 full pike glowing purple and you know that it's just not gonna happen uh so your pve game has to be pretty strong that includes uh farming and getting your crops going having a decent kitchen facility so that you can uh keep in stock some of the uh foods and boozes uh, i'm not gonna go over too too much detail about the foods and the boozes but there is a lot of them and you can stack them so uh you're gonna have to kind of do a little bit of fafo uh science and figure it out <laughs> a lot of us have 
kind of taking the time with these training dummies uh that this is kind of a, a decent starting point right because with the combat in any game you're kind of you practice the combos and it's not that there's a whole lot of combos in this game it's not a combo to be fair um the pike's got kind of like a little combo thing but that's just a little mechanic uh but yeah so with this game there is a decent amount of um like attacks with each different weapon right so utilizing them and getting familiar with them that's really really important to be able to step out onto a boat like an enemy boat or someone is on your boat or they're raiding your base uh, you're going to want to familiarize yourself with the weapons. You're going to want to familiarize yourself with the boozes. Uh, maximum booze stack is four. Uh, foods, you'll notice that some of them are just your vitamin supplement foods, so it doesn't give you any extra benefit. And then some of them, like uh, pudding, Reaper's Regard, Oberistu, Creme Brulee, these, they're more like a specialty food where they give you uh, a little bit of a bonus however some of these foods you can't actually stack together so like if you were to eat a pudding uh, reaper's regard is going to take the pudding buff away and you'll see obviously you'll have the reaper's regard so you're going to have to play around figure that out a little bit uh, water jars they're super cheap to make myself later into the game uh, the more I played I realized it was important to actually have water Okay, if you run out of water and you run out of food, uh, you're running out of stamina, you know, you, you're in a bad spot, right? So, like I said, the PvE game, you're going to want a little bit of this stuff set up and ready to go for you before you actually get out and start going into combat. Um, so, yeah, you're going to want water jars, you're going to want your grogs and ale and uh, dark throat. Grog gives you a... Uh, like a temperature resistant an extra buff ale it just gives you the damage buff yada yada uh dark droat's kind of like the extreme one to give you melee damage pvping most often the case you've taken the time you've gone around to each of the different islands uh you've got your discoveries you went to the trenches you got your discoveries there you did your power stones uh your krakens the list goes on okay there's a lot of things you have to do in this game to get your level to be up to 110 i think when you just make a character the max is like 77 and then by getting these discoveries like i said by either going across the map and um setting foot on each island uh that'll give you discoveries or going through, like I said, the trenches or beating the Power Stone bosses, those will all give you discoveries followed up by the essences. Uh, that will be a great way to get a big uh, bulk of your uh, level cap raised. Boop! Okay, so with the discoveries comes the uh, quest skills as well. Now, these are going to be really important to have. Okay, if you've taken the time to read over some of them, there's, well, there's really three that have to do with your PvP. Uh, so, Veteran Pathfinder. This is absolute feats cooldown. This is going to be all your abilities for, like, your sword, your mace, uh, yada yada, your savior. This is your absolute feat cooldown. You want this. This is obtained by, I think this was doing the hard kraken with... You have to have all your power stones to do Kraken V1. Then you have to go and get your essences to do Kraken V2. And then by doing Kraken V2 successfully, you're going to have your absolute feats cooldown of minus 40%. That's huge. Really, really huge. Uh, the other thing, you're going to want to go and become friends with a mermaid. Okay, that's going to be your extra stamina recovery rate. A big thing about the PvP in Atlas is you need a lot of stamina. When you're doing uh, a lot of dodging, when you're utilizing your feats, uh, you, yeah, you need stamina. If you're flying with the glider, you need a lot of stamina. So a lot of the times, players um, will make sure that 
when they're getting themselves ready for PvP, like at the start of the season, they're going to go around, they're going to do their Power Stones, they're going to do the Krakens, they're going to do their Essences, they're going to do the Yetis that they have blue hands, uh, and they have torpedoes. But this is all the pre-game, like the PvE that you have to do so that you can get out there and start crushing it in PvP. And the other thing is the Fountain Rejuvenation. So in Atlas, you can see your character has an age. My character is 100 years old. So I would then have to go to a Power Stone Island, and there is a Fountain of Youth there. And by going to the Fountain of Youth, you're going to get rejuvenated one, two, then three. Those are actually very substantial as well uh, when it comes to your overall PvP. So if we look, rejuvenated level 2, can't quite see that, but it's 2 point something uh, plus melee multiplier plus 25%, uh, stamina 15%, weight 15%, health regenerate 15%. So pretty much playing the game, uh, your character is going to like um, age throughout the course of the day's IRL time. Your character is eventually going to reach 100. You're going to go to the fountain. You're going to get the rejuvenation buff. And you're going to get all these extra bonuses. So that, again, is kind of part of the PvE aspect of having a successful PvP game. Um, so, yeah, we talked about the food. We talked about water jars. Always have a water jar. Don't ask. Just just do it. Just always have a water jar. Always have ale and grog and booze. Uh, always have your vitamin supplement foods so even even if it comes down to like uh meats your raw meat your fish meat uh your berries and your vegetables to get your equilibrium bonus that's very important for your pvp game uh the other thing medkits right can't tell you enough how many times i've spawned over to people's boats and they're they have someone on board or they're about to get into a pvp fight and they need a repair guy or if you're you know wandering around a lawless and you just got a bunch of loot and you're running away and you're starting to die you need med kits so pretty much anywhere and everywhere i go in atlas i'm always going to take kind of a basic loadout and to me a basic loadout would be like your plate set uh maybe some booze maybe a water jar uh usually about 30 30 to 40 bolas uh, sometimes I'll take a carbine, but the essentials is basically your four weapons here. And in particular is just kind of the three categories. You have your swords, uh, you have your common pike, and your common two-hander mace here. So these are pretty much your primary weapons of the game. There is uh, carbines and hydro revolvers and blunderbuss and spear launchers, but I don't particularly use too many of these for uh, the foot PvP. These are more niche things, like a hydro revolver, you'd carry it around if uh, you know they're going to be gliding barrels out to your boat while you're raiding. Uh, you can shoot someone that's gliding out of the sky, so you might carry around a hydro revolver. You might carry around a hydro revolver for uh, kiting the bosses. That's not important, so we're actually not going to talk about those today as a practical PvP item, you know. Uh, we're just going to be talking about the land PvP. First thing we're going to want to know... You're going to want to go and level up. You're going to want to go either hit the Cyclops boss with a primitive carbine from the ledge. If you hit him in the eye, it's like 6,400 uh, damage. Uh, that's a pretty decent way to level up. Or doing treasure maps is a wonderful way to level up. But you're going to need a lot of points. For PvP, uh, the, the higher level you get to, the better. Right around 100 is usually where I stop in most seasons. Uh... By getting to about 100, and we also have the Fountain Rejuvenation bonuses, we'll have uh, max health. I usually go for about 350 stamina, 30 fortitude. That's um, a given by having your, your vitamins balanced in equilibrium, right? The more the merrier on the stamina, because I can't tell you enough uh, how much stamina you use when you start to get into it, like with the foot combat. Uh, so... Yeah, we talked about the the foods, the booze. The basic loto is, you know, your three weapons, some bolas, uh, probably a blackjack, probably a climbing pick. Myself, I always carry a sickle, a spyglass. That's a pretty 
it, it, it's a luxury item, but for myself, every time I have a kit, I have a spyglass, I want to know who's on what team, you know, I want to know the information, what kind of sails they have on their boat, yada yada. Uh, a glider, a glider suit, if it's applicable, uh, yeah, this is this is pretty much your fundamentals. A wooden shield, uh, a while back there was a nerf on the uh, metal shields, so more often than not people will be using uh, the wood shields just for the stun rate uh, yeah so myself personally I don't really use the shield too too much but there's a couple interesting mechanics that you can do with it your gear you have your med kits you have your weapons you have your food your booze your water you've leveled up your character uh, you've gone to your skill tree there's only a couple of things that particularly apply to your PvP um, now we're going to talk about that quick. So in your melee weaponry, uh, you're going to want your critical strike. You're going to want your um, circular slice. Of course, you get it by getting uh, critical strike. You want your targeting weakness, targeting soft spots, and that pretty much takes care of your hand weapons. Uh, if you go into the armory, uh, on the left-hand side, secrets of armor. Uh, that's going to give you your plate gear and your glider suit. If you go on the right side here, we'll keep it pretty basic. That's the advanced armor articulation. This is uh, your movement speed when you're wearing the plate gear. So you want to be fast. Uh, you want a lot of stamina. You want a lot of health, but you want to be fast. So you're going to want your armor articulation. Okay, if we go into the uh, medicine... There's a huge list of things that are in here. Um, you can do yourself the favor and either just spec down to here and then uh, add in like advanced healing uh, or whatever you want to do. You can unlock the whole tree if that's what you want to do, but I just keep it pretty basic. Uh, that gives you enough feats. The med kits actually become useful for you. Uh, so yeah, I just kind of keep it basic. So we got our melee weaponry, our armor, and our medicine. Once that's taken care of, you're going to want to go over to uh, piracy, and you're going to want to get the basics of piracy. That is giving you your handcuffs and your grapple hook. You're going to want secrets of piracy. That's going to give you your gibbet, your wooden cage, and your guillotine. And once you have those things, maybe look into um, cooking and farming, honestly, because you're going to want the recipes, but you're also going to want uh, advanced expedited orders this is going to actually increase the speed of which your ingots are smelting and your gunpowder is crafting don't ask me why it just does that so that's part of your pve game okay uh so yeah that takes care of our skills we talked a little bit about the quest skills how central those are uh but these are the three that really matter to your pvp game you've done all the things you have all your stuff together, you've leveled your character up, you've unlocked your skills, you have done your quest skills. Oh man, so much pregame. Uh, now that you have all your abilities unlocked and you've done all your PvE pregame, you have your foods, your booze, uh, you have everything ready to go. You've leveled your character up, you're ready for PvP. Uh, you're going to look at your ability feats bar and you're going to see it's out of whack, so you're going to uh, want to adjust that right so we press G hover your cursor over the feet that you're looking at and whatever button you want it to be on you're just going to then press that button you don't have to click anything extra it's just that easy okay so once you have organized your hot bar like your ability feats bar the way you want it and the way that's comfortable for you uh, now we're getting closer to being able to PvP. Um, one of the things we're going to talk about too is the mechanics of this. So in Atlas, there is a combat mode and non-combat. Okay, so combat mode, you can see, put my fist up, and then that's non-combat mode. Okay, so this is an important thing to know. Okay, because in PvP, you have a dodging mechanic. In Atlas, by double pressing the direction you want to go, you are going to do a jump step, okay? And if you combine that with the press of a space bar, you're going to double press forward, press space bar, and you're going to launch forward. 
okay? The only time you can launch forward is by just having uh, your bare hands. If you have a weapon out, you're not actually going to be able to do that, okay? So that is important to know. So by tapping R, that's how you go into combat mode and go out of combat mode, okay? The other thing you're going to want to know is uh, pressing Q. Okay, so if we put our sword in our hotbar here, and we press 1 to bring out the sword, okay, so we're in combat mode, we tap Q, and it puts our weapon away. And now we can dodge forward, dodge backwards, remember this is a double press and a space bar, okay, and by pressing Q again, it brings our sword back out. So that's going to be an important thing to know about melee uh, fighting. We have Q and we have R. Okay, so you press R, you press Q, or you can just press 1 and press the mouse button. You automatically go into combat mode. Uh, that's going to be an important thing to know, okay, because you're going to want to be able to dodge. If you dodge uh, before the strike connects, the player is not going to be able to do damage to you. So you're going to want to get familiar with dodging, okay? Especially uh, on boats, uh, it's going to become a very important thing. And that's another reason why we need so much stamina is because of the dodging, okay? So once you've familiarized yourself with that, uh, let's start talking about the weapons. So the mace and the pike kind of fall into the same category as the shovel. Uh, you're only allowed to have one of them equipped at a time. So we'll start out by showing the pike. The sword is a different uh, type of slot item. So you can have a sword and a pike and as well your blackjack. Uh, you're going to want a grapple hook. Let's see here. We got a grapple hook. Oh, snaggle. Give me that grapple hook. <laughs> Yer. Okay, so you're going to want a grapple hook in your hotbar. You're going to want uh, a sickle or something, some kind of farming tool. You're going to want some bolas. You're going to want, I always say, at least two med kits. Uh, maybe your spyglass. And yada yada. Okay. So now we have our feats bar. Now we have our inventory loadout. This is what we're going to do. So. Going over th the uh, three basic weapons, we'll do the swords kind of together. Uh, so let's actually go ahead and put that out. So I'm not even going to try and pronounce this name. However, everyone calls it the Bleed Sword, and it does just that. Uh, with a particular hit, uh, backwards scroll, you're doing kind of like an overhead swing. That'll cause a bleed uh, to tames or enemy players or something. That's what makes this particular sword pretty powerful. Okay. Uh, the bleed damage is actually pretty OP. Uh, with just the regular sword, uh, of course you can get them blueprinted, you can get a really fancy sword, you have uh, critical strike and circular slice, it works for both swords. Okay, usually players will be activating them together, critical strike will pretty much double your damage, and then circular slice is a full radial attack, and with your feet cooldown, down, you can activate it really, really quickly. So that's a super handy thing to have. It makes the sword pretty, pretty amazing. Um, with the sword, there is uh, three basic attacks, which is your swipe. Okay, so just by pressing your left button or your right button, you're going to swipe either left or right. Okay, there is the backwards scroll, which is your overhead swing. Okay, and if you scroll forwards, there's a little poke jab, okay? The little poke jab, sometimes it can stun the enemy for a second. Um, that's, it's pretty handy. Each of the weapons has kind of like a little poke attack, right? Uh, so that's the sword in a nutshell. There is a parrying mechanic for it and a blocking mechanic for uh, the weapons, and they pretty much correspond to each of the weapons. So like you'd use a mace to block a mace, yada yada, so on and so forth. Um, Moving on to the pike, the pike is a pretty amazing weapon. A lot of people use uh, the pike or the mace, but the thing that makes the pike the best, well, one of them, is it has a lot of range, okay? 
So it has a lot of range. Every now and then you'll get that spike in damage. Okay, that's repeat damage on the same target. I'm pretty sure there's a mechanic happening there. So the, the pike's pretty good. Now you have your swipe, and then you have your backward scroll, which is kind of like a lunge step forward, and you hit the training dump. Right, this lunge step forward, similar to the sword, this is actually going to do a big poke stun, and it's pretty formidable. So the pike and the mace, they're pretty heavy duty with stunning. Uh, the mace was actually nerfed a little bit, so the stun wasn't, I think it was um, a while back, but it, it was tuned up a little bit so that the stun wasn't as effective, but it's still very, very pungent in combat. So. Yeah, so there's the sword, there's the pike. We're going to put on my personal favorite, which is the mace. And I'll show you a little bit about that. Now, the mace is a pretty heavy-duty weapon. It's going to be doing a lot of damage. Uh, it's not the most damage out of all the weapons. The most damage out of all the weapons, honestly, because of the feats, I would say is um, the sword. If you have a decent blueprinted sword and do your critical strike circular slice, that cranks out so much damage is crazy but the good thing about the mace is it's an aoe kind of weapon right so when you're hitting with the mace that 50 there that's kind of like a splash damage okay when it's a direct hit there we go uh right now we don't have any booze activated this is just the basic damage of a primitive mace okay but you can see what's happening so that's a backwards scroll okay so if you backwards scroll you're gonna take a step forward and you're gonna you're gonna strike the ground and that's doing a little bit of a radius of damage so the mace is super good super super fantastic weapon um, there are three different attacks with it basically you got your swipe which is just by clicking one of the buttons either left button or right button you have your um, your poke which is by pressing the scroll button okay and you have your overhead slam and the overhead slam is pretty powerful pretty powerful uh there's two abilities for the, or what are they feats there's two feats for the mace there's uh, targeting weakness and targeting soft spots targeting weakness you're going to avoid a percentage of your enemy's armor uh, that's usually the one i i go for uh targeting soft spots is one that will apply a lot of torpor to your enemy Okay, so just by hitting, you're gonna be doing a lot of torpor to your enemy, right? So if you wanna put them to sleep, or you know they've been hit already by a horse or something, you're gonna use targeting soft spots to make sure you can knock out that enemy. Um, with the mace, when you do have the mace in your hand, you run particularly slow, okay? So this is where we were talking about pressing Q, okay? so. A lot of the times if you're fighting and you're using a mace and sometimes you're about to make contact um, you and you realize that you're about to like go right into their mace slam one thing that you can be doing is utilizing Q okay and this brings your fists up so you can dodge forwards you can dodge backwards you can dodge side to side right but then you can press Q again and your mace is out. Okay, so that's going to be kind of a little bit of a thing that you're going to have to practice. Um, myself personally, I learned by playing with a lot of really amazing people. And we would sit here, we would use a training dummy, we would create fake tribes, we would fight each other in like little PvP arenas. Because uh, honestly, this is one of those games that until you figure everything out, Ugh, there's a lot of stuff right and it may seem a little crazy to try and figure it all out but if you just kind of start with a strong pve game and then take your time and practice and familiarize yourself with all the different weapons and the dodging okay that's going to be huge like even if you're in a mace fight you hit someone okay when you have the weapon out Remember, like I said, you can't dodge forward. You can't do that step forward, right? You can only dodge back, right? So if you're about to get hit, you dodge to the side, you dodge to the side, right? If you're trying to 
hit someone and then all of a sudden they're swinging too you can just put your mace away and dodge backwards or you can jump forwards whatever you need to do so you're going to want to take some time you're going to have a decent pve game you're going to want to get yourself a good kitchen operating uh, you're going to want to go around and do your power stones and your essences maybe try the kraken um and then yeah like i said you're going to want to take some time and really familiarize yourself with the dodging okay it's very vital mechanic for doing a lot of things uh, the only other thing that I would uh, want to talk to you about is the uh, blackjack and the grapple hook and the bola right now we're going to talk about these mostly for tames if you're going up against someone who is on a tame uh, there's three ways you can dismount and it doesn't work with all of the tames usually uh, There's a couple of niche tames. Okay that you have to use a particular item for uh, But going over it the blackjack, okay, if you're in combat mode You can see your club be ready to strike and you scroll backwards. That is how you're going to um, bop a rider off of the animal Okay, I see a lot of people they're poking it or you know they're just they're hitting it and they're trying to you know they're trying to beat every cent out of that horse that's not how you do it you want to be in combat mode and you want to do a swing okay so that's going over the blackjack the grapple hook this is another great way for getting people off their tames uh, especially if you're using a front swivel horse I would recommend practicing uh, using a grapple hook from the back of a horse okay because when someone's trying to raid your uh, space if you got a front swivel horse going you can actually pull out the grapple and you can grapple the guy off of their tame and then tell your rider to shoot okay so but we're not going to talk about the horses too too much we're just talking about how to get people off of the tames okay so the third way to dismount somebody off of a team is a bola. bola. Bolas are utilized a lot in PvP. Uh, if you snare a player, it'll make them stuck for about a second or two. And so sometimes that can help you get an opportunistic strike, or it'll help you get away. Or in this case, if you hit the player off the back of the team, you're either going to, like, if you aim for the horse, aim for the player, uh, get the player you're either going to get the horse or the gunner either way that's going to help your situation so having an abundance of bolas great thing to practice with great thing to have uh, that's kind of why it's an essential thing in pvp uh, your bolas your blackjacks just going to take a second to add a quick note about the grapple hook if someone happens to grapple you and you are grappled um you can use a melee tool or a sword or a blackjack and you can simply swipe and it'll disconnect the grapple from you. Uh, one of the key mechanics to this uh, to work successful is you have to be looking at the player that has you grappled. Okay, so hopefully this helps. Another big thing is look into your inventory, go into your settings and turn down your automatic combat lock. Uh, I was told about it quite a while ago and it helped a lot to grapple hooks. And then your three weapons, which is your pike, your sword, your mace. Uh, going into the weapons, just one more second. Uh, we're going to talk about the practicalities. If you're in the water, uh, using a sword or a pike is going to be a better thing for you. If you're. Um, Fighting someone on a boat, typically the mace is the king. Okay, the mace is just, it's really good. The, if you're really good with a pike, the pike can kind of increase your movement speed a little bit by carrying it. Uh, if you're really good with a pike, that's great. But the mace, right now, as of current, is something that it can hit through one deck of some ships, right? So if someone's hiding down below or someone's above on deck, you can be below deck with the mace, you can slam and it'll start doing damage to them. The mace is kind of the king for the boat when you're on the ship. Um, but that's just my opinion, of course. Um, but then on top of that, one thing I'd like to note is if you use 
a mace, okay? You're on your ramming galley, someone's chasing you down. Always have a mace, okay? If they grapple your boat and you see where that tether is, you can be below deck and do a mace slam and it will break that tether connection, okay? Um, that's something we kind of all picked up recently uh, with the use of grapple boats a little bit more frequent. So keep that in mind. When you're making a kit for your boat, you should always have med kits, food, water, booze, um, you know, your basic plate sets, uh, but always have a mace and some grapple hooks, you know, because uh, being able to cut that tether might actually save your boat. Okay, but that pretty much sums up everything. Okay, so we went through the food, the booze, uh, the armor, the levels, the feats, the radio menu, how to organize that. We talked about the dodging. Uh, we talked about pressing Q, put your weapons away so that you're a little bit more mobile. Um, that pretty much sums it up. And we spoke a little bit uh, briefly about how to get someone off a of tame. Again, the blackjack, the grapple hook, or the bolas are going to be your best friend. Okay, so... That pretty much sums it up. If you have any ideas for future videos or content you'd like me to actually look a little bit more in depth into, please, by all means, let me know in the comments below. Again, if you enjoyed the content, like and subscribe. And um, yeah, if there's anything else you want to know, uh, hit me up, let me know, and I'll see what I can do about making a short tutorial video for just that. All right. Take care, good luck, have fun, and enjoy your PvP, Uga Uga PvP.